Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here in Alabama for the first time of my life, but definitely I will be coming more and more because I fell in love in the state of Alabama and uh, wonderful people. And uh, so I will come again, but I want to ask you a question. How many of you have been to Israel? Oh, wow. A lot. I didn't expect that. Wow, yeah, I see you in the five. Thanks for that. So, I want to ask you a question. How big do you think Israel is? I mean, the world media and the American media is so obsessed about the state of Israel that many would believe is as big as uh, China, right? Well, here's the truth. So this is Israel's map on top of the American map. You see the tiny yellow, that, that red, um, yellow spot? This is Israel. It's uh, about the size of New Jersey. You could put it in Alabama maybe 10 times. If we go forward to the map of Israel in the Middle East, can you see the tiny red dot? So this is Israel, and all the sea of green around it, this is the Arab world that surrounds us. Just the Arab, the Muslim world is twice as big. Today, I want to talk to you about why Israel rightfully own this tiny red dot, and why it can never give up any part of it. Today I want to tell you why it is the right thing to support Israel. So, it is the right thing to support Israel because of its Jewish history and the connection of the Jewish people to their land. It is the right thing to support Israel because it's the right thing to do so as Christians. Israel is the only country and defender of Christianity and Christians in the Middle East. It is the right thing to support Israel because it is the only liberal democracy in the Middle East. It is the only one in the region with total religious, religious freedom for all faiths. Israel is the only country in the region that women have full equality. It is the right thing to support Israel because it's America's most loyal and trusted ally in the Middle East. And it's the right thing to support Israel because of its right of self-defense. Israel is the only country in the world that its right of self-defense and even its very right to exist is being in doubt. So let's start with why it's essential to support Israel due to its Jewish history. The Jewish people have been attached to the land of Israel for 4,000 years. From the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the days of King David. It was King David 3,000 years ago that established Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The strong attachment to the land of Israel runs from the heroism of the Maccabees until present day. Time and time again, the Jews were conquered and exiled from their land. 
but they never lost hope to return to Jerusalem and regain their independence in their homeland. As it states in the book of Psalm, by the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. While the Jews fought to live as a free nation in their own land, there were always people that tried to disengage them from their land. The most notable attempt in ancient history to disconnect the Jews from their land came in the second century AD when the Romans changed the name of the province of Judea to the province of Palestine. The Romans named it after the long extinct Philistines who were of Greek origins and were living on Israel coast. You all heard of the Philistines from the Bible. At the time of the Romans, they were long extinct. 2,000 years ago even, the Philistines who came from Greece were no longer existent in Israel. The ancient Philistines people have nothing to do with the current Palestinians who are of Arab descent, not Greek, Arab descent. Despite these attempts, the connection of the Jewish people to Israel and to their ancient land is undeniable. Besides the Bible, there is countless amount of archeological evidence that reflect on the rich Jewish life in the land of Israel in ancient times. I wanna ask you a question. Has anybody here been to Rome, Italy? Oh, less than what you've been to Israel. That's good. <laughs> so, if you ever visit Rome, you have to go to the city center to a place called the Forum Romanum. The Forum Romanum was the Forum Romanum was the heart of the Roman Empire and the city of Rome in its peak 2000 years ago. There stands one of the most impressive proofs of the connection of the Jewish people to the land of Israel and to Jerusalem. As you can see in the picture, this is inside the Arch of Titus. The Arch of Titus stands in the middle of ancient Rome, and it was built 2,000 years ago to celebrate the victory of the Romans over the Jewish revolt. You can see in it artifacts from the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, including the lamp, it's very notable, the lamp, or the menorah, as the Jews call it, which is the symbol of the Jewish people ever since and the symbol of the modern state of Israel. For almost 2,000 years in exile, the Jewish people never gave up on the hope to come back to Jerusalem and to the Holy Land. At the end of the 19th century, the Jews finally started coming back to their land in large numbers. Today, there's a common misconception, especially with a uh, younger generation, that when the Jews came back to the land of Israel at that time, it was already occupied and populated by the Arabs. But the fact is that when the Jews started rebuilding their national home in the 19th century, the land was an insignificant part of the Ottoman Turkish Empire. The land was barren and empty. The famous American author, Mark Twain, visited the Holy Land in 1867, and he wrote in his book, Stand solitary in a silent plain, a desolation, we never saw a human being on a whole route." End of quote. Most of the Arabs that live today in the land of Israel and call themselves Palestinians only came to the land around 100 years ago from neighboring countries. There were no borders at the time between countries, so the Arabs came from neighboring lands to find work and better economical life. One of the most common last names in the Palestinian Authority 
is Al-Masri, which means in Arabic, Egyptian. Another one, common last name of the Palestinian Authority, is Halabi, which means a person that comes from Aleppo in Syria. Another one is Hijazi, which is an area in Saudi Arabia. So, you see, not only the Jews were first in the land of Israel in ancient times, they were first in modern times as well. Jews are called that way because their origins are in Judea. And Arabs are called that way because their origins are in the Arabian Peninsula. It is important to support Israel from a liberal perspective as well. Israeli Arab Muslims have total civil equality in the country. For the matter of fact, Israel is the only country in the Middle East where Muslims really have the right to vote. The Muslim Arab population in Israel is even represented in the Israeli parliament, our version of Congress, with their own unique Muslim Brotherhood party that openly calls for the destruction of Israel. We call it freedom of speech. <laughs> In the Palestinian Authority, most Arab and Palestinian Authority in most Arab countries surrounding Israel, women are the official possessions of a man. Usually, it's their father or their husband. In Israel, women have total equality and are serving in all fields of public life: judges, doctors, military and police police officers, politician, and even as a prime minister. So let us continue and talk about why is this essential for Christians to support Israel? The Christian strong bond to the Jews and to the land of Israel goes all the way to the beginning and to Jesus Christ himself. Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem with a note above his head. You have it in almost every church. There's a note above Jesus' head saying, I N I I. Which stand, in Latin, it's Jesus Nazarenum Rex Judeum, which translates into Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Christian interest in the return of the Jews to their land started after the Reformation, but it became more significant in the 19th century, mostly in the UK and the US. In 1819, President John Adams wrote, and I quote, for I really wish the Jews again in Judea, an independent nation, end quote. A popular slogan of Christian Zionists at the time was made by Alexander Keith, a Scottish church minister who wrote, who wrote in his book, a land without people for a people without land. I bet you all heard of the Israeli Defense Forces and its might. But how did it start? The Jewish people did not have an army and did not fight for almost 2,000 years since the Bar Kokhba rebellion against the Romans. Jews fighting and defending themselves became something unheard of in the world. Not many people know, but the first Jewish military force in modern times was established by a Christian. John Henry Patterson was a lieutenant colonel in the British Army, and he was a devout Zionist. During World War I, John Patterson formed the Jewish Legion of the British Army that fought in the war with Turkey. Under his command, the Jewish Legion became the first Jewish fighting force in millennia. Patterson is considered to be the godfather of the Israeli Defense Forces. But there's also a personal side of the story for me. He was also the godfather of my uncle, Jonathan Netanyahu, who is even named after him. Jonathan, my uncle, is one of Israel's greatest heroes. 
he led the famous rescue operation of the Air France hijacked airplane in Antebe, Africa in 1976. He was the only officer killed in the operation. In Philadelphia, where he and my father grew up, there is a monument in his honor, as you can see in the picture behind me. So as Christians, it's important for you to support Israel for the sake of Christians. Throughout the Middle East, Christians are persecuted and being ethnically cleansed. The Middle East, which is the birthplace of Christianity, may soon be left, left without Christians. The only place in the Middle East where Christians not only survive, but also, also thrive, is Israel. Christian citizens of Israel are officers of the army, doctors, parliament members, and judges. A good example for how important Israel is for the Christians is with the holy city of Bethlehem, where Jesus Christ was born. Up until 1994, Israel controlled the holy city of Bethlehem. The Christian population city stood up around 80% at that time. In 1994, Israel signed the Oslo Accord and gave up the control of the city to the Palestinian Authority. After years of persecution by their Muslim neighbors, today the Christian population of Bethlehem is less than 15%. A huge mosque was built on the, next to the Church of Nativity to show the Christians who's the real boss there. Let's carry on. As Americans, it's important to support Israel because it's the most loyal ally you have in the Middle East. America has no better friend than Israel, and Israel has no better friend than America. <laughs> Our enemies call Israel the little Satan and call America the big Satan. They hate Israel because they see it as an American and Western outpost, outpost in the heart of the Middle East. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> when 9-11 happened, this was the reaction of the Palestinians. The atmosphere, the V sign for victory being displayed uh, in uh, East Jerusalem today among jubilant Palestinians. Uh, that the United States had been subject to this attack. What are we to make of that, Jennifer? Um, are we to, uh, Yasser Arafat may issue this condemnation. Look at this. We're seeing uh, people applauding, clapping, smiling, uh, happy to, to know that thousands of Americans have died in this sneak attack. And there you see a V for victory sign uh, held up to the camera. In Israel, in the contrast, it was a day of mourning, horror, and pain. The only 9-11 memorial that you see in the picture, monument, that contained the steel from the Twin Towers and bear the names of all the victims of this horrific terror attack and located outside of the USA is in our capital, Jerusalem. The people of Israel not only admire the American culture and the American people, but also its president. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Israel inaugurated a new town in the Golan Heights, naming it Trump Heights. <laughs> in honor of President Trump. Israel and the Jewish people never, ever had a better friend in the White House. Yeah. 
We are deeply grateful for him for his historical decisions of moving the American Embassy to Jerusalem, our internal capital, and for recognizing our sovereignty over the Golan Heights. We are also deeply grateful for him for pulling out from the disaster in Iran deal. A deal that will enable Iran to obtain nuclear weapons and that would be a serious existential threat to Israel, to America, and to the entire world. Finally, it is important to support Israel because it has the right of self-defense and right to exist. Israel is the only country in the world whose right of self-defense and right to exist is being questioned. It's important to remember that Israel is the only country in the world that is being threatened to be wiped off the face of the earth every single day. The Palestinians, Hezbollah, and most importantly, Iran openly declared their desire to annihilate Israel and the Jewish people. Iran is even building a nuclear weapon to do just that. So if you remember the map of Israel in the Middle East, the tiny red dot that we had before, if we zoom in the tiny red dot that we had before, this is what we find. Most of the population of Israel live along the coast, as you can see in the highlight area. On the, to the west, the white thing to the west is the Mediterranean Sea. To the east is Jordan and the West Bank. So as I said, most of the population of Israel live along the coast. The West Bank, or Judea and Samaria as it should be named, is 11 miles, only 11 miles away from Tel Aviv which is our version of New York, Israel's biggest economical hub. Not only that the West Bank or Judea and Samaria is so close to Israel's major metropolitan area, it is, has a tremendous geographical advantage. While Israel coast is on sea level, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria is a high range of mountains up to 3,300 feet. So many would ask, what is the problem for Israel to pull out from there and give it up to the Palestinians for the sake of peace, right? So, well, we've tried that option already. In 1993, Israel, in 1994, Israel signed the Oslo Accords. Up until that time, Israel controlled 100% of Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. By the way, it's good if you can keep the map still in the background, because, you know, it will be easier for... Yeah, thanks. And the Gaza Strip. <laughs> so, in the Oslo Agreement, Israel recognized the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, as a legitimate partner and brought tens of thousands of its leaders from far away Tunisia in North Africa to the hills of the West Bank, a few miles from Tel Aviv and from our capital, Jerusalem. This is the time to explain that the PLO is a terrorist organization that is responsible for countless of terror attacks in Israel and around the world, killing thousands of innocent civilians, Israelis, Europeans, and Americans. They were even uh, doing the famous uh, Munich Olympic terror attack in the 1970s. After Oslo agreement, Israel created with the PLO, the Palestinian Authority, transferring to the control all Arab cities in Judea and Samaria and the Gaza Strip, including the holy city of Bethlehem that we talked about before. So not only now the PLO, a terror organization, have land in Israel, Israel gave them weapons too. 
hoping they will put it to good use for law and order. Now, can you believe this is not what happened? In a very short time, after the Oslo Agreement, Israel was rocked with a series of horrible terror attacks. Suicide bombers in restaurants, clubs, and buses. The wave of terror la it lasted for years and brought to the death of almost 2,000 innocent Israeli civilians. So, you see, this is the reason why the slogan, Land for Peace, doesn't actually work. The Palestinian Authority named schools, squares, and streets after terrorists that murdered Israeli children. The Palestinian Authority have a pay-to-slay policy. The Palestinian Authority is paying salaries to terrorists and to their family, monthly salaries. The more Jews, Christians, babies, children, and women the terrorists have murdered, the higher his salary is. About a quarter of the budget of the Palestinian Authority goes for funding terrorism. The money, where did the money come from? They don't produce anything. Where does the money come from? The money comes from hardworking taxpayers' money of Western countries. Thanks to President Trump, America has stopped funding the Palestinian Authority until... <laughs> stop funding the Palestinian Authority until they will stop paying quarter of their budget to terrorism. Although the horrible price Israel paid, we've tried another time the formula land for peace, thinking, you know what, maybe this time it will work. This was the disengagement from the Gaza Strip. Do you see on Israel coast, if you go down, you got the brown strip on the bottom of the coast. This is the Gaza Strip. Up until 2005, Israel controlled the Gaza Strip. Of course, not including the Palestinian city, just the, the rest of the Strip and the Jewish population there. And had an Israeli civilians living there. In 2005, Israel decided to leave the Gaza Strip. More than 10,000 Israeli civilians were uprooted and expelled from their homes and from their farms. Even all the bodies in the cemeteries were uprooted. Israel withdrew to the very last inch of the Palestinian demands, hoping maybe this time there will be peace. I mean, finally, the Palestinians have a state of their own in Gaza. And some in Israel said that Gaza will become the Singapore of the Middle East. But instead of using the billions of billions of dollars of foreign aid they received from the world to build schools, mosques, and hospitals, they start taking this money and building missiles. The Palestinians in Gaza began firing rockets on Israeli towns around the border, making the lives of the Israeli citizens there a living nightmare. People that live, Israeli civilians that live in the communities around the Gaza Strip have less than 10 seconds to find shelter when their alarms goes on because they know a missile's coming to their city and it might hit their home. And if they don't find shelter in 10 seconds, they might be dead. And whole gen it's going on for more than 15 years. So whole generation of children in this area knows nothing else. With time, the range of missiles from Gaza grew further and further into Israel until it even reached Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And today, the Gaza missiles cover up the whole state of Israel. Israel had no choice but to go to several wars with Hamas, which is the terror organization that controls Gaza. 
So as you can see, land for peace not only don't achieve peace, but actually bring horrible bloodshed for both sides. As you can see in the map, the Gaza Strip is flat, tiny, and about 50 miles from Tel Aviv. As you can see, the West Bank is all the, you know, the big thing to the east of Tel Aviv. Imagine what will happen if Israel will do the same thing with Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, which is a mountain range, almost half of Israel's size, and so dangerously close to Tel Aviv and to Jerusalem. To give you a perspective of how dangerous that is, I want to show you a picture of how Tel Aviv, again, our New York, is seen, is seen from a Palestinian town, village in Samaria, the West Bank. So the close mountain range with a little village you see at the beginning of the picture, this is a Palestinian village. And in the background, far away in the distance, you see all the skyscrapers and the towers of Tel Aviv. And further away, you see the blue line of the ocean. That's it. That's the width of Israel if we don't have the West Bank. The international community is questioning Israel's right for self-defense anytime Israel responds to Arab aggression and terror against it. It demands from Israel to withdraw from Judea and Samaria and create a second Palestinian state. Remember, they already have a state in Gaza. Such move will eventually lead to Israel's certain destruction. That is why Israel should never, ever give up on Judea and Samaria. In conclusion, it is the right thing to support Israel because of its Jewish history, because it's the only democracy in the Middle East, because you are Christians, because you are Americans, and because of Israel of right to, right to self-defense and right to exist. The connection of the Jewish people to their land of Israel goes back thousands of years all the way from the time of the Bible to present day. Strong forces have tried to detach the Jewish connection to the land of Israel and failed. The people who are trying to do this in our time will fail as well. Today, I am asking you to be an advocate for Israel. When you are voting, it is important to make into consideration which elected official will be good for Israel. I'm asking you to advocate for Israel in your church and in your community, and especially to your children and grandchildren. Please come and visit Israel you will be able to walk in the footsteps of King David and Jesus Christ. I believe the Jewish Christian Brotherhood and the American-Israeli Alliance will only go stronger and stronger. God bless America. God bless Israel. Thank you all so much. Thank you.